Hi, I'm Gernot. I'm one of the founders of Open Kernel Labs and I'm also a director and the chief technology officer of the company. In my spare time, I'm also uh, the John Lyons Professor of Operating Systems at the University of New South Wales and I run the Operating Systems Research Group at NICTA, which is the National Center of Excellence for Information and Communication Technologies. An embedded hypervisor is a software layer that is providing a virtual machine environment. So um, that, that's a general, general definition of a hypervisor, something that provides several virtual machines on one physical hardware. And an embedded hypervisor is developed or geared towards providing this virtualization for embedded systems like mobile phones, um, uh, media devices, um, other consumer electronics, automotives, wherever you need them. One big difference is that OKL4 is on the one hand very mature. It's been deployed for two and a half years in millions and millions of products. Um, but on the other side, it represents the most advanced technology compared to anything else that's out there. It is based on a very flexible microkernel platform, very high performance, very well designed. Um, and that means it does more than just virtualization. It's a perfectly suitable hypervisor for any virtualization needs you may have in your embedded system. But beyond that, it gives you things that no other hypervisor does. It um, in particular allows you to not just run complete virtual, ma virtual machines isolated, which means um, something that requires an operating system of its own, but it allows you to take individual applications out and run them in the minimal native environment, which we call a secure hypercell, um, isolated from any other components in the system with very tightly controlled interaction with the rest of the system. And this allows you to pull critical components, security or safety critical components out in their own trusted environment, run them with a minimal trusted computing base where it's dependent on as little other software as possible, isolated and protected from faults in the rest of the system, so, um, compromises in the rest of the system, etc. So that's one of the advantages. Another one is that we can share device drivers between different virtual machines or execution environments at very high performance. We have um, very high bandwidth, low latency communication channels between protected environments that are subject to strictly controlled system-wide security policies. Um, and we can provide componentized software software that is made up of relatively small, isolated, protected components, which support software engineering, um, helps debugging, etc., but also allows you to um, make the system more robust because it allows you to um, encapsulate software at a smaller granularity. And then what's particularly unique about OKL4, it provides this capability-based protection which allows you to implement very general, flexible, system-wide security policies that are impossible to circumvent, that makes it suitable for really high security requirements. And probably the most exciting thing of all, it's suitable for formal verification. Capabilities are an operating system's concept. They're used for implementing security. A capability is like a key that gives you access to a lock. So if you have what's called a capability to a particular object, then the possession of that capability allows you to perform certain operations on that object. This is in contrast to the more well-known um, protection schemes that are based on what's called access control lists, which is the things you have in Windows, Linux, and other operating systems. 
Um, the nice thing about capabilities is that they give you very fine-grained control over access rights in the system, and this is why security experts like them. And in OKL4, we can use capabilities to control at the very fine granularity who has access to what information, where information is allowed to flow in the system, and therefore can implement re very general, um, flexible security policies that are system-wide enforced by the operating, by the kernel. Formal verification is probably the most exciting thing we're doing, and that is the, also the thing that distinguishes us most from anything else that's out there. Um, it is about providing a mathematical proof of the correct operation of the system. So what we have is a um, specification, a formal that means mathematical, expressed in mathematical language, specification of the system, and we do a mathematical proof that goes in a number of steps and is quite involved in fact, um, that in the end gives us certainty in the mathematical sense that the implementation, the actual C and assembler code that makes up the system is consistent with that specification. In other words, a guarantee that the system behaves as specified. There's no system in the world that does that at this time. And we are working with NICTA and UNSW researchers and students on achieving that. The prototype in the research lab is a few months away from completion, and this will be the first formally verified general purpose operating systems kernel. And we will be working with NICTA on putting that into products. So we have this completely unique roadmap to a level of security, safety, reliability on the system that is completely unprecedented and which no one else is going to match. To finish off, I'd like to say that I'm just extremely proud to have such a kick-ass team of um, world-class engineers working on world-class products here. It's just a pleasure to be involved with this and see it grow and succeed. And if you want to know more, just Google for OKL4 or go to oklabs.com. Okay